Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from Ron and Joan Schreiner from Anaheim, Saskatchewan. This Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of a good friend, Ann Dager, for good health for her brother, Joe, and for the people who take care of him. Our thanks to Ron and John Schreiner from Anaheim, Saskatchewan, for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as we work together with God, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For, he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have communicated... (coughs) So, <clears throat> pardon me. So that no fault may be found with our ministry, but as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness. Holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God. With the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left. In honor and dishonor. In ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true as unknown, and yet are well known, as dying, and see, we are alive, as punished, and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. right hand and his holy 
The Lord be with you. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, Do not resist an evildoer. But if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your coat, give your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go also the second mile. Give to everyone who begs from you, and do not refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you. The Gospel of the Lord. Our Gospel today deals with a very familiar teaching of Jesus. When it comes to familiar scripture passages, we can develop a kind of deafness to God's word. After all, once I think that I already know what a familiar passage says, I stop listening carefully to it. And if that happens, then I stand very little chance of hearing something new, something other than what I think it says. Maybe hearing these familiar words of Jesus in a new way might help us hear them better. So let's rephrase this gospel in a way that we might actually hear what Jesus is saying to us. Jesus says to his disciples, To you who are ready for the truth, I say this. When someone gives you a hard time, respond by praying for that person. If someone slaps you in the face, stand there and take it. If someone grabs your shirt, take off your best coat and make a present of it. If someone takes unfair advantage of you, use the occasion to practice being a servant. No more tit for tat. Live generously. Jesus' instruction to turn the other cheek is so very familiar that it has become something of a cliché. We may need to hear it a little differently and take a closer look at that cliché in order to have real meaning and application in our lives. I don't suppose that I have been struck by anyone since a playground spat in the fifth grade. And I don't live in a setting where I'm likely to be struck by anyone. Jesus' example of being struck on the cheek is not, however, a life-threatening kind of attack. If I'm struck on the cheek, what is it that is really at stake? A slap on the face is perhaps more of a blow to my ego than to my body. It is not so much that my life needs to be defended as it is my pride that wants to be avenged. We may not live in settings where we are likely to endure a physical attack, but there are times when our egos get slapped around quite a bit. That can happen even without any deliberate malice on the part of a spouse, a co-worker, even a friend. And when someone has dealt my ego a blow, whether accidentally or quite intentionally, what is my response? Usually my instinct is to strike back. 
So rather than turning the other cheek, a more reasonable ethic for Jesus to teach would be to swallow my pride, hold my tongue, control my desire for vindication, and just walk away. In my Bible study group, we were sharing a little bit about St. Paul's struggles as a missionary and our own daily struggles to live lives that are pleasing to God. We came to the subject of stressful, hurtful relationships. And many people said that they just walk away from harsh and berating speech. For them, the most Christ-like alternative to retaliatory words or actions was to beat a hasty exit. The only choice they saw was fight or flight. But this just-walk-away ethic, which seems very reasonable, can lead to all sorts of broken relationships and abandoned commitments. But being hurt in a situation or the likelihood of being hurt again is best resolved by walking away, then I will find ample reason to walk away from a whole lot of people in situations in my life. I could walk away from my family, from my friends, even from my church. So Jesus tells his followers instead to hang in there, stay in the situation, stay in the relationship where we have just been hurt or offended or bruised. He not only denies us the seeming pleasure and satisfaction of retaliation and revenge, it appears that he wants us to leave ourselves deliberately vulnerable to being hurt again. This seems like nonsense to us. Could it be that Jesus wants us to be hurt? Far from it. Jesus doesn't want us to suffer needlessly. He wants something far better and more profound. Jesus says these hurtful situations give us the opportunity to act like God, to be merciful, just as God our Father is merciful. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them back. Give them even more. Several years ago, I saw someone wearing a T-shirt featuring the traditional symbol of the fish that Christians have used to identify themselves since the days of persecution in the Roman Empire. The fish on the T-shirt was not alone, however. There were a great many other fish, including some rather menacing-looking ones, all swimming in one direction, while this lone Christian fish was swimming in the other direction. Now, that's a pretty good description of our life in this world, especially for those who long to follow Jesus. Perhaps we will not always swim alone, but we are surely called to swim against the flow, not just for the sake of being contrary. We swim in the opposite direction for much of the rest of the world simply because we are swimming towards the kingdom of God. Today, Jesus is telling us how to reach our destination. It's a very familiar teaching, and I hope you are listening. Let us now join our prayers together and ask God to help deal with the many conflicts which disturb and trouble human life. That we may be open to the presence of Christ and the healing force of his love in our lives, we pray to the Lord. That Christ will illuminate our lives and help us to trust in his power rather than the power of the world, we pray to the Lord. That all people acknowledge Christ as the one who can safely lead them to true justice and peace, we pray to the Lord. That Christ may strengthen those in our television community and extend his love to them in times of personal crisis, we pray to the Lord. That all those who have died may find their way to the joy of God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Almighty Father, help us to witness to you by expanding our love 
to include those who have hurt us, so that giving without cost, we may touch the deepest needs of our brothers and sisters. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. God bless you. See these without being humble. Contrite hearts. Lord, wash me away. Consign my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. We praise the Lord of name, for our good, the good of all this holy church. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which he poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. (laughs) 
the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, whoever live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. By Christ.
With those of you at home, join with me now in this prayer of Father Carlo Maria Martini. Lord Jesus, we ask you now to help us remain with you always, to be close to you with all the ardor of our hearts, to take up joyfully the mission you entrust to us, and that is to continue your presence and to spread the good news of your resurrection. Amen. Blood of Christ. 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 Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure and those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Our thanks to Ron and Joan Schreiner from Anaheim, Saskatchewan, whose generous contribution made the televising of today's Mass possible. Remember, if you can't sponsor a Mass, any contribution, no matter how small, will help keep Daily Mass on television, and you'll receive an income tax receipt for your donations.